Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to this session. Today, my topic is hacking the query planner again. Before getting started, I'd like to introduce myself a little bit. My name is Richard Guo, and I'm from Beijing, China. I'm now working at VMware on Green Plum. Uh, this is the agenda of my talk. First, I will introduce a little bit about what does planner do. And then the second part is about the different phases of planning. So let's get started. Uh, this is the overall backend structure. First, we have the parser to determine the semantic meaning of a query stream. And then the rewriter to perform view and row expansion. Next is the planner who designs an execution plan for the query. And the last is the executor to run the plan. So what planner does is to find a correct execution plan that has the lowest cost for a given query. Uh, actually, for a given query, uh, it can be executed in many different ways. Some may be faster and some may be slower. So if it if is computationally feasible, the planner would examine each of these possible ways. Each way is represented by past data structure. And at the end of the and at the end, the planner would select the cheapest path and convert it to a full fledged plan. So now let's move on to the second part, different phases of planning. Uh, the, the planning process can be divided into four phases. The first phase is pre-processing. At this phase, we simplify the query if, po if possible. Also, we collect information such as the join ordering restrictions. And the second part is, is scan join planning which is to decide how to implement from and where parts of the query. And the third phase is post-scan-join planning, which is to deal with plan steps that are not scans or joins, such as uh, aggre ag aggregation, distinct or group by. And the last phase is post-processing, uh, which is to convert the results into a form that the executor wants. Oh, okay, uh, now let's go through each phase one by one. Uh, at early pre-processing, we try to simplify the query by several kinds of pass tree transformations, including simplified scalar expressions, inline simple SQL functions, and uh, simplified joint tree. So to simplify scalar expressions, we uh, reduce any uh, recognizably con constant sub-expressions of, of the given expression tree. So for example, for function calls, if the function is strict and has any constant null inputs, actually we can reduce it to a constant null. And if the function is immutable and ha has all constant inputs, then we can uh, hand it to the executor to execute. So for Boolean expressions, we can do such simplification as uh, reduce x or true to const true, and reduce x and false to constant false. An assumption here is that the sub-expression x will not have important side, e um, side effects. Okay, uh, for, uh, for kiss expressions, we also can do simplification if there are constant condition clauses, such as for this expression, we return x plus one, not the error message, right? Okay, so why we bother simplifying? By simplifying, we can do com computations only once, not once per row. And also we can exploit constant folding opportunities exposed by 
view expansion and the SQL function in line. Expand the SQL, uh, simple SQL functions in line. Here is an example. Okay, uh, we have a function increase four defined as the uh, argument plus two plus two. So for, for this query, uh, select increase four A from full. We inline the function and transform it to select A plus four from full. So please know that we also perform the constant folding within the function, right? We can read two plus two to four. So by inlining SQL functions, we can avoid the rather high per call overhead of the SQL functions. And also we can expose opportunities for constant folding within the function expression. And simplify join tree. Uh, there are several cases that we can transform the join tree into a more efficient form. But in this step, we don't have any statistics info to use. So we do the transformation based on some, some predefined rules. For edit and exist sublinks in where and join on clauses, uh, we can try to transform them into semi joins. And for subqueries in the join tree, we can try to merge them into parent query. We also try to read reduce join strings by reducing outer joins to inner joins or anti joins. So uh, here is a query with exists sublink. Uh, the query is select star from foo, where exists select one from bar, where full point a equals bar point c. Uh, actually we can transform it into a semi join since it's correlated with parent query. And also we, we are able to discard its target list. So it, it can be transformed to, to query select, select star from full semi join bar uh, full point A equals by point C. And uh, uh, here is the join tree before the transformation. Uh, as we can see the sub select exists as a where call clause or in this join tree. And so this is a join tree after the transformation and the sublink has become a semi join. Okay, uh, here is another query containing a sub query. So the query is uh, select star from full join select bar point C from bar join bars on true as a sub on uh, full point A equals sub point C. So uh, actually uh, this subquery is, is simple enough that we can pull it up into the parent query. So it uh, can be changed to, to this query, select star from full join bar join bars on true on uh, full point A equals by point C. Uh, note, note that for, for the transform the query, actually we can join the three base tables, full bar and bars in any order. And uh, considering that there is a join clause between full and bar. So most likely joining them first would give us a better plan. But for the original and transformed query, actually we, we will have two join bar and bars first if we don't do the proof. So here is the join tree before the transformation. And as we can see, the subquery exists in the range table list of the parent query. And uh, it would be planned in independently if we don't do the prob. And now uh, this is the join tree after the transformation. And the, the subquery has, has been merged into the parent query. So by, by pulling up subqueries, we may produce a better plan 
as we consider it as part of the entire plan search space. Otherwise, the subquery would be planned independently and treated as a black box during planning of the auto query. Uh, re reduce, reduce joint strength. Okay, uh, let's look at this example first. So here is a query. The query is select something from full left join bar on something where bar point D equals 42. Uh, actually, we know the, the equal operator in, in where is strict, right? So for, for any row where the left join field in nouns for bus column, the three, the strict operator will always return now, causing the the outer wear to fail. Therefore, there is no need for the join to produce the non-extended rows in the first place. So, so which makes it a a, a plain inner join, not a, a, an outer join. So we can conclude that if there is a strict call above the outer join that constrains a var from the nullable side of the join to be non-null, then we can reduce the outer join to inner join. And now let's look at another example. So here is another query and the query is uh, select star from full left join bar on uh, full point A equals bar point C, where bar point C is null. Okay, for this query, actually we know the join clause full point A equals bar point C. It's, it's strict for bar point C, right? So only non-extended rules can pass the upper wear. The, the wear, the bar point C is null. And we can, conclude, we can conclude that what the query is really specifying is an anti-join. So that is, that is to say, if the out joints own calls are strict for any nullable one, that was false now by higher call levels, then we can reduce the out join to anti joins. So uh, until now, what we are talking about is all about the past three transformations. And at a later pre-processing, we would distrib distribute all kinds of call clauses and build equivalence classes, gather information about the join ordering restrictions, remove useless joins, and so on. So first, let's look how we distribute the call clauses. Uh, in general, we want to use each call at the lowest possible join level. When dealing with, we dealing with inner joins only, we can push a call down to its natural semantic level. So by here by natural semantic level, I mean the the, the level associated with just the base rails user in, in this call. However, when dealing with out joins, a call may be delayed and cannot be pushed down to its natural semantic level. And for this kind, for this kind of outer joint delayed calls, we mark them with the uh, with the required real IDs, uh, which includes all the required reals in the in the outer joint. So by pretending that the call references all the reals required to to form the outer join. Actually, we prevent it from being evaluated below the outer join. Uh, and usually there are two cases that our call can be outer join delayed. And uh, so for the, for the first case, let's look at this query. So it's, the query is select star from full left join bar on um, full point A equals 42. So it's a left join, right? And it has a join call full point A equals 42. Uh, the, the join call mentions the non nullable side real of which is full. And if we push, the, we push this call down 
below the outer join, then it will, will become a filter on full and uh, it will remove all the rules that it is not equal to 42 before the join. So as a result, we might lose some non-extended rules that should have been in the final result set. So we can conclude that an, an out joins own join on calls mentioning non nullable side reals cannot be pushed down below the out join. And, the, and for, the, for the second case, let's look at this query. So the query is uh, select star from full left the join bar on full point A equals bar point C, uh, where coalesce bar point C one equals 42. Okay, uh, it's, it's a left join. And uh, there is a call above this out join. Uh, which is coalesce bar point C, one equals uh, 42. And uh, this call reference the nullable bar bar point C, right? So if we push this call down below the outer join, then it would become a filter on bar, and it would reject the rules before the outer join. So as a result, it might cause the outer join to emit now extended rules that should not have been formed or that should have been rejected by the clause. So we can conclude that cause appearing in where or in a join above the outer join cannot be pushed down below the outer join if they reference any nullable vars. Okay, uh, let's move on. So uh, in Kremlin's classes, for, for merge joinable equality clauses A equals B that are not out joint delayed, uh, we use in Kremlin's classes to record this knowledge. So uh, in Kremlin's class uh, represents a set of values that are knowing all transitively equal to each other. And in Kremlin's clauses are removed from the standard core distribution process. Uh, instead, uh, E class based core clauses are generated dy dynamically when needed. And in Kremlin's classes also represent the value that a pass key orders by. So the, the logic here is since, since we know x equals y. So order by x should be the same as order by y, right? Okay, now let's talk about join order restrictions. So if we have out joins, actually we cannot perform the join in any order. Out joins induce join order restrictions. And one side, one side out, out joins like left join or right join, constrain the, the order of joining partially, but not completely. And in general, non-full joins can be freely associated, associated into the left-hand side of, of, an, of an outer join. But in some cases, it cannot be associated into the right-hand side. So let's look at two examples below. Uh, for the first example, A left join B um, predicate P A B and then in the join C on um, P A C. So this in the join can be associated into the left hand side of the left join. So we can we can uh, get A in the join C on um, P A C and then left join B on um, P A B. And then let's look at the, oh, sorry. Let's look at the, the second example. So A, A left join B, um, P, A, B, and then in the join C, um, P, B, C. So for this time, the, this in the join cannot be associated into the right-hand side of the left join. So 
even though there is a join clause between B and C, actually we cannot join them first because it's illegal join order. And, and for, for the non-full joins, uh, we flatten them to the top level join list so that they can participate fully in the join order search. And meanwhile, we record information about each other join in order to avoid generating illegal join orders. So another thing we do at uh, later pre-processing is to remove useless joins. Uh, for left join, if its inner rear is a is a single base rear, and the inner rear attributes are not used above the join, and the join condition cannot match more than one inner side row. Uh, 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 actually, the join will just duplicate its left input. So in this case, actually, we can remove this join altogether. So uh, for example, here uh, we have a query and the query is select the full point A from full left the join. Uh, a subquery, the subquery is select the distinct C as C from bar sub um, full point A equals sub point C. Uh, so the, so for this query, the inner real is a, is a single base real of, of subquery and the joint condition cannot match more than one inner side row since attribute C is unique because here we are using distinct. So this left joint can be removed. Okay, now let's move, move on to the second phase, scan joint planning. So at this phase, we, we deal with the from and the where parts of the query. And also we, we know about all the by, so that we can, we can design more joins and to avoid a final sort if possible. So for example, uh, for, for this query and the query is select start from full join bar on full point A equals bar point C and uh, full point B equals bar point D, ordered by B and A. Uh, when generating the merge join, actually we can sort the table full by A and B. We can also sort the table full by B and A, right? But since we know that the final output is, is requested to be sorted by B and A, so we choose the sort key B and A for, for table full so that we can avoid the final sort. And the second phase is uh, basically driven by cost estimates. So for scan joint planning, basically what we do here is to first identify feasible scan methods for base relations, estimate their cost and, uh, and the result sizes and then search the joint order space uh, using dynamic programming or heuristic genetic query optimizer method to, to identify feasible plans for join relations. And uh, meanwhile, we honor out joint ordering uh, re restrictions to avoid generating illegal uh, joint orders. And, uh, uh, and here, and here for each relation, uh, base real or join real, we produce one or more passes. Uh, so so multi, multi joins have to be built up from pairwise joins because that's all the executor knows how to do. So for any given pairwise join step, we can identify the, the best input passes and the join methods, such as nested uh, loop or merge join or hash join. Uh, while straightforward cost comparisons resulting in a list of passes much as for the, for, for, for the base relation. And uh, finding the, the best ordering of the pairwise joins is the hard part. 
So usually we have many choices of join order for multiple join query and uh, some orders will be cheaper than others. So if the query contains only inner joins, uh, we can join the base re relations in any order. But with, but with outer joins, as we have uh, talked about, uh, they can be reordered in some, but not all cases. So we handle that by checking whether each proposed join step is legal. And with standard join search method, uh, we construct the join tree level by level using a dynamic programming algorithm. So first assume, assume that we have already generated passes for each base relation. Uh, then we generate passes for each possible two-way join, and then for each possible three-way join, and then four-way join. Until until all base relations are joined in, into, into a single join relation. Uh, so uh, here, here is a demo about how we construct the join tree. So uh, the, query, the query for the demo is uh, select stuff from A join, B join C on B point G equals C point G on A point I equals B point I. And uh, as the first step, we generate the passes for each base re relation. And then we generate, we generate the passes for two-way join. For A join B, we create two passes. One is, uh, for example, hash join, and one is merge join. And then we figure out that the, the pass of hash join is in, inferior to so we, we just discard it. And here for A join C, actually we, we don't try to make joins with them because we, we found that there is no join clause between them. And then for B join C, uh, we, we create two passes and discard the inferior one. And, uh, and then we gen generate we generate the passes for 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 three we join. So for join real A B and the base real C, we create two passes and discard the inferior one. Here. And for join real B C and the base real A, we also create two passes, but but then both are discarded. So both are discarded when, uh, when, we, when competing with the existing pass. So, so at last we pick this pass, uh, which is merge join A and B first, and then merge join with C. And the join searching is expensive. So actually, an, an AV join problem can potentially be implemented in, in N factorial different join orders. So usually it's not feasible to consider all possibilities. And, uh, and what we do here is to just to use a few heuristics like, like as shown in the demo, we, we don't consider clauseless joins. And with too many relations, by default is 12 we fall back to the uh, gene genetic query optimizer. Uh, heuristics used in, in join search. So uh, as we said, we don't join relations that are not connected by any join clause unless force two by join order restrictions. And also for large join problems, we try to break it down into some problems according to some collapse limits. Uh, for example, here we have a query and, uh, and uh, uh, we have 10 tables joining together. So by, by setting the join collapse limits back to four, uh, we can break it down into uh, sub problems that's no more than four we join. And then, 
we can handle each uh, each sub problem independently. Okay, so now let's move to the to the third phase, uh, post scan joint planning. So at this phase, we we deal with uh, group by aggregation window functions are distinct. We also deal 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 with uh, set operations like uni in intersect and accept, and then we apply final sort if needed by uh, order by. And uh, for each of our step, we produce one or more passes. And at last, we add lock rules, limit modified table steps to each surviving pass. So uh, this is the third phase. And uh, the last phase is post-processing, uh, where we expand the, the best pass to plan. And then we adjust some uh, representational details of the plan. So such as we, we flatten subquery range tables into a single list. Uh, we, we label VARs in upper plan nodes as outer VAR or inner VAR to uh, refer to, to the outputs of their subplans. And we also uh, remove unnecessary uh, subquery scan append and uh, merge append plan nodes if if we figure out that they they are not doing anything useful. So uh, this is uh, the first the last phase. And uh, uh, that's all for my talk. Uh, thank you.